So um, what I'm focusing on here is things like um, exhibits, objects for, for human amusement and analysis, observation, touch, painting, sculpture, photography, music. So um, <clears throat> the things that I think we might need to consider in relation to this are uh, what the intention of the piece of art is. I mean, I don't come from an arts background, but having tried to study what it is they're doing in teaching art, I'm thinking that the, the intention of what they're displaying is an important thing. <clears throat> so, uh, and also that it's not a piece of work in isolation, it fits into some sort of framework, some people might say a theoretical framework, other people might say a creative or, or a developmental framework. Um, and I think people in academia certainly would say that if a person was putting forward some artifacts, they would have to have an understanding of where they were, what their place was within that framework, that, no, uh, that knowledge framework, probably, um, what the genre was, how unique their piece of work was. Um, so those things tend to bring in this idea of the need to write about whatever it is you've done. So in art, I, th I find uh, art is quite an interesting area to look at when you're thinking about you know, valuing um, people's experiences and people's developments and people's um, out outcomes uh, because it, they are sort of a, seem to be at, a, at an extreme in some ways. Uh, there are things like intuitive practice which they're, they're thinking about that we, 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 we also thought about but perhaps they thought about a little bit more. Things to do with feelings in artistic endeavours and how they affect other people's feelings. So there are, they seem to be at an extreme to me. So I wanted to look at, at, at that anyway. And to, to sort of, um, if you like, um, stimulate some discussion, what I've done is just, um, you're going to help me, no, 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 no. <laughs> is uh, just got a little clip of a film, uh, of, sorry, of a play, which some of you may or may not have seen. It's called Art, and if you haven't seen it and it's on somewhere, then I would say go and see it because it's great. Um, and we'll just show you a little clip here. Thank you very much for helping. Okay, so this is the man has bought a painting, and it's a blank, virtually like a blank sheet of paper. Um, And some of the things that they talked about in that short clip were the price of it. So it's a blank sheet of paper. Maybe you can see some grey lines. Maybe it looks a bit like one of these balls here. Um, and uh, so the value of that piece of work is you know, clearly seen as an important thing. What, what value will other people put on that piece of work? And especially, what value will DeLonghi, you know, somebody who knows about these sorts of things, put on that piece of work? So when we're talking about valuing something uh, artistic um, in terms of, you know, what it's worth as a piece of work, does the money side of it come into it? Um, peer review is important as well. Uh, reputation of the reviewer, as I've said, DeLonghi. He's the Gary owner. It's important because he is then seen as a peer. He's seen as somebody who you'd be working alongside, and so you, your standard is as good as their standard. Uh, it's being known as popular because it circulates in the market, as they say in the clip. The painter's reputation is important. So what we're getting a picture of is this idea of reputation, meaning status, meaning significance, meaning worth, meaning value. How does that play out for us if somebody brings along that piece of paper, that, that piece, that, that canvas? What does that mean for us in terms of valuing something? What is the merit of that piece of work? And the question I have at the bottom also is, does the assessor need to see these artifacts or is it sufficient to know that they have existed, that they're in a catalog, that they were in once in a um, um, exhibition or of such sort? Is anyone from an arts background here? You are. No. So does it ring a bell with any of anything you've thought of? 
business school um, and I have students who I ask to make something I specifically call an artifact on a digital marketing module and have quite a lot of difficulty making light for light comparisons. So these aren't work based artifacts in the sense that the student is mm -hmm. enrolled at university yeah. during the period that they make whatever it is mm -hmm. but they provide a work place context. They design it for a company um, there were a couple of things in the exchange that I thought, thought were interesting because um, uh, the, the quality of the finished product may vary immensely. It, it's, its intrinsic, if there is such a thing as intrinsic value, is very difficult to judge. So I would certainly find a blank white canvas quite hard to judge in isolation for its intrinsic qualities. It's all about the context, as you said. Um, and my students might vary between producing something that looks like it's been, and has been shot on a mobile phone by a group of friends doing something without professional production values. But if they provide an appropriate context where they explain what this could be and why it might mean something, that, then I would give it far higher credit than a student who's produced something that looks quite slick, for example, if they have access to good uh, video editing software, but don't really know what it's for. So I'm going to couple of things there. But also, are, are we necessarily assessing the object, or are we assessing the producer of the object, the student? Uh, and assessing in this case, the learner is assessing the learning, the production of the object. Yeah, the learning, I want to know what the learning has been from the production of the artifact or object, not necessarily the value of the object. Yeah. So the object could be kind of at the end, but the learning has been great. Um, but if the learning has been great along the, from, from that, yeah. the reduction of that, if it had been shot on a mobile phone, but huge amounts of learning in terms of film production and, yes. and everything else, then I would say, wow, that's, that's yeah. really fantastic. Those parts of that. Absolutely, and, and it comes back to the conversation we had at the beginning, I think, around, you know, where is this learning arising from? Is it arising from, in the, in, in the cases that I'm talking about, what they say it's arising from things they've done in practice in their working environments, where the explanation or the um, example you gave 
it was something that you, you know, offered, there was an opportunity to do within a program. So it's sort of decontextualized in a way, mm -hmm. although it's contextualized in an academic program. So, you know, that's one way of looking at it, I suppose. But um, then when the person presents it, they, they in my experience, pe people tend to, um, they don't decontextualize it, but they tend to forget that they know everything about the context in which that they developed this thing. Um, and they don't connect all of the different ways in which that it might be significant. Because it, it, its significance, whatever it significance is, could go in a number of directions, even in their own organisation when they develop something. You know, somebody could pick it up and take it in a certain direction, whatever it is they developed. And therefore it takes on significance because of that. So um, it isn't it is, uh, in, in my experience, it is, it, it is about uh, the context, but it's, and it, it's about the individual learning, but it's also about the players in that context as well. So one of the real problems with, uh, well, I think it's a problem, anyway, uh, with the doctorate of professional studies, and, uh, particularly by public works, is that it's not a program that anybody can do. It has to be done by somebody who is in a context where they can make things happen, because you can't achieve, you can't show, you know, great knowledge and learning if you're in a position where people won't consider what you're doing and you have got no scope to move things forward. So in that sense, I think it's, it, there are problems with it, but um, in other senses, it is an opportunity for people who normally can't access higher education to do that. that's what you have to look at. Um, if, you're, if, you're, if your artist is, and their, their product or their, their material is their body themselves, Absolutely, yes. I, mean, I just found some interesting uh, material on that. Um, somebody at Westminster who's writing about it now, about um, audiovisual PhDs and how you know, the difficulties involved with doing audiovisual PhDs.